Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up your own gazebo world and how you can customize it to your own liking. Like in all the previous videos, the follow along link is in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to be doing in this tutorial is adding a bunch more gazebo models. And we're going to be adding these gazebo models from the Open Source Robotics Foundation. And the Open Source Robotics Foundation are the people who made gazebo. And so they're offering a bunch of different gazebo models that are just open source and you can go ahead and add them to your own simulations. But before we do that, uh, we're going to have to install something called Mercurial, which is very similar to Git. It's another uh, version control uh, software, but just made by different people. So let's go ahead and add this, or copy this line into our terminal and make sure that Mercurial is installed. So I already have Mercurial installed, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, clone the gazebo models from OSRF. Perfect, now all the gazebo models are downloaded, but we need to tell gazebo where gazebo can find all the, all the different models. So we're going to have to add this line to our gazebo models path variable, and we're going to do that by adding this line to the bash RC. So just go ahead, copy that in, and uh, run this in the terminal. Boom. So now in order to update this uh, variable, we're going to have to go ahead and source the bash RC. So run this line. Boom. Now Gazebo can find all the models that we just downloaded. Alright, so now that we got all the models and everything set up for the new models, uh, we're going to go ahead and make um, our first custom Gazebo world and we're going to call this world hills.world and we're going to make this in the in our CatKid workspace under IQSim uh, in the folder worlds. So go ahead and open up Sublime and then go down to IQSim and then worlds and then make a new file and then go back to um, our file along and go ahead and paste all this code um, into the new file that you just made. So paste this in and then save it as um, hills dot world. So basically I'm going to be going in more depth what all this code actually is in a future tutorial but basically for now it has the physics uh, that makes our drone simulation run really well and then it also has the model for our drone as well as uh, an attached camera that we'll be using in following tutorials. So now we're going to go ahead and also make a launch file so that we can run the world with ROS. So go ahead and make a new file and then go ahead and paste this code in. And then go ahead and save this and call it hills.launch. Boom. Alright, now that we have our launch file, we can go ahead and run our new world. So go ahead and run ROS launch and then IQ underscore sim and then hills dot launch. Boom. And that should go ahead and boot up. Alright, so now I'm going to show you guys how we can add some models to this world and then save our world for the future. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is come over to the insert tab and then scroll all the way to the bottom and we're going to add the uh, model called uh, Windy Valley, Valley Height Map and basically this will give us uh, some realistic geography for our drone to fly around. And we notice that <laughs> there's this weird flat plane so go ahead and click on that and go ahead and delete that. So now we just have the flight map, the height map. And basically, this is a much more realistic environment for our drone to be flying around in. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how we can move our models around. So the you can translate your models by going ahead and clicking on this, and then clicking on your model, and then just uh, dragging the model around. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the uh, drone all the way over to here, where it's flatter. That would be kind of a more realistic position to start your drone for a flight and that's where I'm going to go put it. So I'm going to continue to do drag this around over here. The next thing I'm going to do is show you guys how we can rotate um, the models. So if you come over here you can just like the translation click that and then you can go ahead and 
uh, rotate your models just by clicking and dragging on the different um, things. Perfect. So now we have um, a height map uh, of some hills and our drones and like kind of a nice starting place. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and add a model of a person. So let's go ahead and add the guy called standing person and this is in between parrot and pickup truck. It's supposed to be uh, alphabetical order but for whatever reason this guy just ends up in the P's. So click this guy and then go ahead and also <laughs> the best thing to do here is pause the simulation that way when I insert him he won't just like fall to the ground because of uh, gravity and then fall over. So insert him and then uh, use the translation tool to pull them down uh, basically so that he's touching the ground and then make sure you put him in a flat spot so he doesn't fall over when we uh, hit play on the simulation again so I'll go ahead and put him there and then go ahead and hit play again and the guy is now uh, standing there in our world proudly so let's go ahead and add one more model and we'll go ahead and add um, the pickup truck. Boom. Let's add that guy. And then I'm going to go ahead and just uh, translate him down so that it looks like he's sitting on the ground. Perfect. So now we got a nice world, um, which looks like we got our drone. Uh, and then this guy who may be like flying the drone and then uh, his pickup truck. So this should be good for now. Um, let's go ahead and save this world for later. So go ahead, hit file, save world as, and then go Kakin, source, IQ sim, worlds, and then just go ahead and override hills.world. Save. Now you guys should be able to add models and make your own simulation worlds. Um, in the next video, we're going to be testing out some computer vision and having the drone recognize this man and this truck. So, see you in the next one. Peace out.